one one of the things that I did not want to happen in my relationship with Juliet was I got tired of satisfying that appetite somewhere else. And here's the truth of the matter. It's an insatiable appetite that never gets satisfied. Right. My my sexual relationship with Juliet is bomb. Like when I tell you <laughs> five star, <laughs> it's, it's it is Ritz Carlton. <laughs> no, yeah, we 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 have the most it's phenomenal you. sex life. After of all time. 22 years of marriage. Let Listen, let, 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 let when I tell you here. it's Liddy Liddy, yeah. it's Liddy Liddy. Yeah. So, so, so what, what, what I got tired of robbing myself from. Talk about it. It's drinking from my own well. Mm -hmm. Eating from my own storehouse. Uh -huh. Right? And mm -hmm. going to have peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. When he had a filet mignon waiting what? before you. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. <laughs> and so, like, our sex life is like. It, especially at this season of our life, it's, we put porn to shame. <laughs> <laughs> we do. Don't we? I would, I would say. I mean, I don't watch it. It ain't my business. Yeah, but yeah, yes. yeah. It ain't my business. No, I, we, it ain't my business. Yeah, our sex life puts porn to shame, for yeah, sure. For sure. I made vows. I broke them. Hindsight, I didn't comprehend the gravity of the exchange of this solemn promise. A vow before God and man. It's time to unpack these sacred words so that I never take this oath lightly ever again. I'm Latera Sar Whitfield, and this is the Marriage Vow Series on the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. I'm your host, Latera Sar Whitfield. Listen, before we get started, are you still shacking up with us? If you are, go ahead and hit that subscription <laughs> button and subscribe. Come on. Uh, we got to make a commitment. Let me tell you something. I'm so excited. I've been getting so many DMs, inbox messages about the power, the, the transformation, the revelation you're all receiving uh, from this Marriage Vow series. And so I called my boy. I called my, my homies up so we can go ahead and unpack these vows. And I want to have this couple on because they exude the mantra of the show, which is keeping it lit, living intentionally and transparently. So without further ado, welcome to the Dear Future Wifey podcast, Tim and Juliet Ross. Hey, what's cracking? We good, we good. We good bro. Thanks for having us. I should have called y'all pastor, but if I no. called y'all pastor, what, what, uh, what it you say, Tim? would have been a swift rebuke. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a really good yeah, I man. can't say pastors, Pastor Tim and Juliet Ross. I mean, no. yeah, you could, as long as you don't say Pastor Tim and Pastor Juliet every single time after that. <laughs> Right. Because, I mean, at that point, who you reminded? Right. Exactly. <laughs> you said something key about that. You said, tell me what you said about calling you a pastor. Yeah. So, um, Tim is my name. Pastor is my noun. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm sorry. Tim verb. is my, my name and my noun, but pastor is a verb. Okay. Right. <laughs> it's an action word. It's what I do. I pastor. Right. But yeah. it's not who I am. Right. Who I am is Tim. And so... You know, if Usain Bolt walked in here right now, you wouldn't say, hey, Sprinter Usain. <laughs> and like every time you mention him, hey, Sprinter Usain. And if Michael Phelps walked in here, you wouldn't be like, hey, Swimmer Mike. <laughs> Michael Jordan walked in here, you wouldn't be like, hey, hey, Baller, Baller Mike. Baller, Baller Mike. Jordan. Baller Baller Jordan. Jordan. So, so I, just, I just feel like I, I know that the titles uh, carry with it honor and respect. Yeah. But I've been completely disrespected and completely dishonored being called <laughs> Pastor Tim. Well, because you don't find your validation in the title. That's exactly and right. That's really what that is. You don't find the validation in the title. And you always joke about it too. It's kind of like sometimes, you know, everybody prays on different levels, but you ever hear people that pray, they'd be like, Father God, and we just thank you, Father God, Father, Father God, God, we just thank you. Times, 50 million yeah. Father yeah, God. Yeah. It's like he doesn't need to be reminded that he <laughs> knows he's yeah. the Father. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, the, and the last thing I'll say about it is that um Jesus wasn't given a title that at the name of that title, every knee shall bow and right. tongue shall confess. He was given a name That's right. that was above all names. So demons don't care about titles, titles mm -hmm. but they do know names. Woo! So we're going to just start off like that? Is that how we're going to start off? I mean, off? Okay. You, you, you asked for context. Okay. I had to okay. get it. All right, so we're just going to just jump on in there. <laughs> Today's episode is entitled Marriage Remix. Okay. Um, because we've already unpacked the marriage vows, and I want to just... I want to tackle everything. Yeah, let's go. Um, and I love that you guys are so transparent. And so we're going to talk about it. Now, you you guys also offer um, premarital counseling. And so when you when, when a couple comes before y'all and they say, hey, we want to get married, 
What is the first thing y'all ask them? Well, <laughs> I'll, I'll give you my first thought. My first thought, and, and it's actually the first thing I actually share with uh, couples that come in for pre metal is my assignment is to try to break y'all up. Yes. It's my first Only thing. Only if they are, I mean, if they're really young. I think if they're older couple, do you still try to do that? I do. Yeah. Older? I try to break them up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because if I can, yes. I've saved them from a divorce. 100%. Talk about it. Talk about it. <laughs> so I'm going to dig in every crevice. We are going to expose every red flag. Um, I'm going to ask them all the uncomfortable questions. I'm going to keep them accountable sure. on, 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 on sex. Yeah. Uh, cause, cause any couple that comes for premarital counseling, that's already had sex, they will call a red flag, hot pink. <laughs> they will call it burnt orange. <laughs> they will call it burgundy. <laughs> or if you're from India, burgundy. burgundy. Okay. They will call it anything, but what it's supposed to be. Because once your bodies come together, mm. you, you'll make any excuse to keep that connection mm. and so i'm about separating bodies so that minds and souls can really form together and then you know the bodies can come after you've actually made an informed i do now what i tell mm. them when i first meet Formed them is i'm not going to work harder than you are yep and don't yes. waste my time just yep that's that is, what you that, says that every single time do not waste my time mm -hmm. and i'm not going to waste your time mm -hmm. but i'm not going to work harder for this than you are mm -hmm. i'm gonna work i'm gonna work as hard as you but the moment that you give up, I'm out of here. Yeah. And how do you how do you how do you exit? What do you say? Hey, this is no longer serving neither one of us. So let me just. Oh, I, I don't I don't have a problem letting them go. I will let them <laughs> at all because <laughs> I'm not going to sit there and keep if you keep coming back with the same thing <laughs> and you haven't done the first thing I told you, to right. do, yeah. you are Very now true. wasting my time and you got to go. Yeah. And maybe I'm not the one for you. And that's OK. That's you can okay. find another counselor that has more patience. But I like to call it, I like people that are hungry that really want it. I don't like yes. people that waste my time. I need people that you really want this, you really want to be right, you really want to really work on this marriage. That's who I'm attracted to. Yeah. Yeah. But those that are like, well, we're just piddling around, don't piddle around this way. <laughs> you go somewhere else and piddle around. It's true. <laughs> it's so true. Where are you from? I was born in New York. Okay. I, I grew yeah. up in Florida, but yeah, I don't well, have, I do not have time for that, slothfulness. She got the East Coast wagon. <laughs> yeah, she does. She East does. Coast gangster. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. She yeah. yeah. no time, you know what I'm talking I about? Don't. Kid, you know what I'm saying, kid? And yeah. she's Afro-Caribbean. Afro-Caribbean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's, oh, so Bahamian, she got, she's Bahamian and Jamaican, yes. so that oh, Jamaican side, yes. <laughs> that Jamaican side is machete toting, bro. Oh, my goodness. You don't want, you don't want that side. You know what? Yeah, because time is precious. It is. And I don't like it wasted. Yes. I don't yes. mind sharing it if you're going to do what you need to do. Talk about it. But I do not like my time wasted. So, yes. I, so, that's why. But I let them know that up front. Yeah, she does. So, there is there is no, like, I'm just cutting you. No, yeah. I told you. I you told you. Yeah, yeah, yeah so for true. sure. So, Tim and I, we uh, grew up in the Potter's house. And um, I was doing theater. Mm -hmm. And my homeboy, we had a dual drama ministry called Scripture. Mm -hmm. and, and Tim was a lyricist. You know, I always said that I used to look at Tim uh, when I was growing up, I said, yeah, he going to be, he going to be big, uh, in the rap game. I said, but he's one of those people that the world will take, mm. you know, and yeah. the next thing you know, he's some secular artist. And I was like, but he was supposed <laughs> to be, he's supposed to be the Lecrae of, of 2021. Uh, uh, that's interesting. So, um, what happened? During that time, you were rapping. Yeah, you had a lot going on. What were you doing? I was, I was rapping. I was doing stand up comedy. I was also preaching. And um, God just crystallized it for me around 2003, 2004, that he wasn't going to allow me to thrive more in what I was talented at uh, above what he had gifted me to do. Because I can take credit for talent. Yeah. Right. But I can't take credit for gifting. Right. And calling. And, and so right. God, like the way I see the Bible, I, I've. I have half a semester of Bible college. Don't ask me how, but I, I, I accomplished that. I accomplished half a semester. Wow. Um, uh, but I've been preaching 25 years. God has opened doors for me to go literally all around the world to preach. Yeah. And the way I see the Bible is a gift. I, it's a pop-up book to me. I open mm. it up. I, I see it. I don't even read it as much as I see it. And then I'm able to communicate that in a story format that allows people to get it, come closer to Jesus. So. That's that's you said God's you see glory. the Bible as a pop up book. Mm -hmm. That's how it illuminates with you. Yeah, yeah. I, I see everything that I hear and I see everything that I read. So when when I'm having a conversation with it, with somebody, I'm watching them. I'm not hearing them as much as I'm watching them. That's good. Yeah. So it's it's the Bible is just a big movie to me. 
So that, that makes your counseling sessions on a different level because you're you're watching them, you're hearing what they're saying, but not really paying. You like I'm I'm seeing I'm all seeing this. this, yeah. And then I'm able to give them pictures that they can really kind of almost tangibly take a hold of as it relates to how to how to navigate through whatever they're going through in their marriage. How did you and Juliet uh, meet? What year was it? How long how long y'all been knowing each other? 1998. Yes. Yeah, so 98. We've been mm -hmm. together for 23 years. We've been married for 22. Mm -hmm. 20. Oh, so y'all got married a year after meeting? Oh, yeah. So <laughs> so I, I'll give you the whole thing. It's yeah. so dope. So we met in the youth group. Yep. 1998. Yep. I first laid eyes on her in February 1998. Um, I said hi to her in April of 98. Told her I liked her in May of 98. Told her I was in love with her June of 98. I proposed to her July of 98. God, and, no. we got, and we got married May 1st of 99. That's the story. <laughs> God, no. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. Yeah, you said you saw her, then you said I love her. Well, I saw her in well, February '98. He liked, he liked I saw, you. He saw me. Then said, he I liked he you. Liked me. Yeah. And said, then how yeah. many months later did you say you love her? Two months? Wasn't that about two months? February, March, no. April, May, June. Four months. Oh, four months. Uh -huh. So four months later. Yep. 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 yep no, yep. he saw me in February. Yeah. He he I met said me hi. in April. Yeah, I made her. I I said I introduced myself to her and we in said April. You, you know in April. Then he in said April. he liked me in May. Yeah. Oh. Then he said he loved me in June. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then you put a ring on. Then it. I put a ring on that finger <laughs> in July. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Well, let me ask you then, Tim. You, how old were you at that time? Uh, at the time that I proposed 13. to her, thirteen. Thirteen. <laughs> 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 a ring pop. Right. Yeah, he, my my he, my, he's my, to my out parents my my parents wrote wrote a permission <laughs> slip for us to get married and finish high school at the same time. No, um, um, I was twenty two. Because the reason why I asked that going is on twenty three. Young age, where you know you you were marriage minded at that young age from from the age of eight. Really? Oh, for sure. Between my parents, Charles and Maxine Ross. And Cliff and Claire Huxtable. <laughs> Couldn't nobody tell me I wouldn't get married. I was going to be married. Oh, sure. Oh so at 22, you said, I want to marry this woman. I did. What was it about her? Um, it, first of all. It was my Dakes Bible. <laughs> he loved my big Dakes family Bible that I carried around. Yeah, that big old Prior Bible. Prior to that, around. it was that big old booty. That big old booty? Yeah. <laughs> Prior to the Bible. So the it was that, oh it was that Bahamian booty first. <laughs> <laughs> and I noticed as I looked up, there was a Bible. And there was a Bible. And a Bible the, oh then, then I looked goodness. up further, and there was breasts. And then I looked up further, and there was a face. And all, all things, of it was good. All of those things were there. And, and she, she really loved. She loved God. I mean, yeah. which was very attractive to me. And the other thing Hold is, on, stop. I want to ask that. Why was that attractive? Because a lot of women may, a lot of single women who are in love with God feel like that's the very thing that's stopping them from meeting a guy, yeah, you know, because uh, I want you to actually add value to that statement. Yeah. Why was that attractive? Well, the reason why that was attractive to me is because um, I, I came from a culture in California, Southern California, where, you know, my older brother founded a gang, y you know, it was just a lot of, the environment was trash, right? Mm -hmm. And so I was used to running game on girls and I needed a strong woman that was player proof. <laughs> Player and, proof. And when I met Woo. Juliet, I knew I, I can't run game on her. And that was attractive to me. He and she knew what she wanted. She had clear boundaries. She was focused. Even though she was 18, that girl was focused. And um, uh, it was a, uh, it, 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 it was naturally attractive to me because my mother is strong and, and I'm used to strong women. Yeah. I'm not used to being around weak, weak women. So I, I would say for a, a, a woman who feels like her strength is uh, a liability to her being in a relationship, it, it, the problem is not her. Talk about Th it. There is a, there is a um, deficit yes. of men yep. on the market. Yes. A lot of boys. Yep. yep. <laughs> right? Yep. Yes. But but very few men that are on, actually on the market. Did you so. want to get married at a young age? Oh, no. I didn't <laughs> want to get married at all. You didn't? No. That girl had one foot no, in, no a, in a nunnery. <laughs> <laughs> that girl was about to be in a convent. <laughs> well, no, not that either. But no, I did not. I didn't want to get married. Why not? Well, because I saw my my parents' marriage. They were married for 22 or 24 years, one of them, in the 20s. Uh, but they didn't make it, you know, my, yeah. my, my dad had his issues and, um, 
And so I just didn't want to have to take care of no man. You know, like I just, you know, I didn't want to have to babysit you. So you looked at it as taking care of a man. Yeah, because, uh, you know, my father had, I I love him dearly, and he definitely gave his life uh, to the Lord before, but they just, I did not want to have the... um, I just didn't want it, man. I just, <laughs> I just yeah, did. I just, you know, about it that was yeah, you know, when you married. just kind of see uh, a very unhealthy marriage yeah. growing up, you're just like, yeah, I don't want that, and I don't, and I don't want the games. And so, yes. uh, even when he got together again in the very beginning, when we started just to even talk further, I was like, listen, I'm not going to do X, Y, and Z, right? From the very beginning, mm-hmm. he'll, he'll attest. I was like, I'm not going to raise my voice to you, and you're not going to raise your voice to me. So I'm not going to tolerate arguing and yeah, i saw it so much i'm like if you yeah. can't talk to me on this level yeah then we're not meant to be married i'm not because i'm not a child right so there are foundational things that we set from the beginning that was like if you can't sort of work with this then we're gonna keep it moving that's good you know so but i yeah i just didn't i just didn't feel like i needed to be i was i'm very independent mm-hmm. right i haven't noticed very, that Julia. So <laughs> I, I just you hide that very well i just I couldn't kick up on that very self-sufficient, you know, oh I do things. I do a lot of things. I learn a lot so that I'm not dependent on anybody. So I, yeah. I just never grew up with that mindset that I needed a man. Yeah. If I, if I had one, it's because I wanted one. Good. And that was, but, and I, that was that's, attractive. That's what I was about to say. Yeah. That that's was what we attractive. Yeah. My God. I was just telling a friend that yesterday I said, listen, I don't want a woman to need me. I want a woman to want me, mm-hmm. you yeah. know, because that want is going to keep you coming. You know, yeah. if the need changes, you're like, I don't need you no more. Exactly. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Like, sure. you. It's like you passing a level in a video game. <laughs> like, what? Well, don't need that hammer no more. You know what I mean? It's like, right. yeah, I don't want to be in that situation. I don't want to be in that yeah. situation. Yeah. So what made you accept his proposal? Um, well, <laughs> that's a, that's an interesting part of, that's an interesting part of the story. He gave you a very edited yeah. uh, story of how we met. Um, I'll tell you this before, before I met him, I was. Uh, I had male friends mm-hmm. that I enjoyed spending time with, good time with, she right? Was like Tim was. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a cliff notes. She was a player, you was a player. You two players got together. No. I, I'm, I'm tracking you. Keep going. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Well, after the last player, after I cut the last player, right? Yeah. Um, I just, it was, it was probably January or February of that year that I said, okay, Lord, I, I appreciate these great gentlemen that were in my life. Right. However, I, none of them seemed to be working. Talk there was about always it. something like yes. just something. One's yes. either too old or, yep. you know, one got a kid, your age. It's <laughs> like, oh, that ain't cool your either. Age. Yeah. Your age. Yeah. Oh, trust me. I have been in all the situations. Yep. One is, and then they all wanted to just, you know, we're just having a good time. Yeah. And they all want to get married. So soon, like me, y'all fall in love too quick let's like just <laughs> let's just chill let's just chill so i was like man lord i i don't want any of these distractions mm-hmm. and so i literally said lord it's just me and you i really don't want anybody and i'm very much a woman that is mind over matter so if i say something that's what that's it is it. i'm very mind over matter mm-hmm. and so i'm very much a woman of my word and so when i said lord i don't i don't, really don't want to be bothered with anybody i just wanted to be me and you that's exactly what it was so Whoever you had else. this mindset at 17, 18 years old. Mm-hmm. Very much. Mm-hmm. Yes, very much. She so did. so, <laughs> so did. Yeah, but you know what? I've hey. I've um but I've I've had a very different mindset from when I was six. And it was something that my mother uh taught me, and I'll tell you what it is. And it it literally I was five, six, and seven years old, and my mother, um, because she had a terrible marriage with my father, um, she never spoke anything bad about him, but she also never saw, she, she never really knew what I saw them go through yes. either, you know, because mm-hmm. parents try to protect you, yes, we do. you know, from, uh, try to protect their kids from what they're going through. Um, but I saw quite a bit and he was very abusive towards her in, in, in every regard. And, um, and so randomly, just randomly, she would just say to me, Juju, you know, your dad is just your earthly dad. But you only have one father, and that is your father in heaven, right? That's what she would tell me randomly on a Tuesday at three o'clock, you know, <laughs> wow. just very random. But she never said anything bad about my dad. Then another, you know, maybe twice a year she would say that from five, six, and seven. Juju, baby, remember your dad 
is just your dad. He's just your earthly dad, but you only have one father, and that is your father in heaven. Okay? And then I'd say, okay, mommy, because we are island people, so we call our mothers mummy. Okay? Uh, another time again, we'd be over lunch. Juju, remember now, your dad, he's just your dad. He's just your dad here on earth. If it weren't for him, you wouldn't be here. So he's your dad. But you only have one father, and that is your father in heaven. And I'd say, okay, mommy. I don't know why this is hitting me on a different level. I'm trying not to get emotional. Keep talking. It does to everybody. Yeah. It's, it's, it's. Another year. <clears throat> Juju, I'm seven. Juju, your dad is just your dad, honey. But you only have one father, and that is your father in heaven. And Juju, this is in the Bible. This is the scripture. Jesus said, you have one father that is our father. He's in heaven. So let me tell you what that did to me. At six and seven years old, here is what I began to think. And I always just said, okay, mommy. Okay, I know, mommy. Thank you. But here's what it did in my brain. I said, why is my mother telling me that this is my earthly dad, but there is a different dad who is my father in heaven. She's telling me this clearly because they are too different. And that my father in heaven would never disappoint me. Yes. He would never hurt me. He <clears throat> would never abandon me. He would always take care of me. And no matter what I need, my father in heaven would always be there to protect me. Right. My earthly dad will disappoint me because he had, he's human. He has faults and he's not perfect. So there are frailties that you will see, there are weaknesses that you will see that my heavenly father yes. will never have. So they are not the same and never have to compare the two. Mm. So when my earthly dad fails me, I can always go to my father in heaven and pray to him and know that he will never fail me. This was what I interpreted at six years old from what she perpetually told me. From that point on in my life, I said, okay, well, if that's with my dad, then that's people in general. This is how my brain was mm. thinking. Then mm. all humans at some point in life will probably hurt me. Yes. Will probably be imperfect. Will probably disappoint me. But that's okay because they're human. But my father in heaven will never do that to me. And I can always go to him for that. And I know that if I ever not, if I ever need a place where I don't need to be disappointed, I know to pray to my father. Mm. And so I expect people to fail. I expect people to disappoint because they are human and they are not my father. And so uh, in life, this is how I've grown up with that perspective, understanding how people are imperfect mm. and they will do things that will disappoint you, that will crush you because we're all that way. And so I have a way of giving people a lot of grace because I understand that if they don't have this walk with the Lord, they're gonna fail more mm -hmm. and it is what it is. Mm -hmm. But my father in heaven will never fail me. And so I have grown up my entire life knowing that there is a two. And although that in my parents' marriage, they have had terrible, um, a terrible marriage, I've never had daddy issues. Wow. And I've never wow. had father wounds because wow. I've always known how to separate the two, mm. that he is not a perfect man. And although he was a better dad than he was a husband, yeah, I still knew that he never would compare there to my father in heaven. And so uh, I have had that mindset really from a child and I've grown up with that mindset. And so there's very few people in life that disappoint me. There's very few people because I expect it. It's just human nature. And, but I am surprised when people don't disappoint me because I just understand again, it's just the way human nature is. And I, I celebrate both because we are all in this world together. When I tell you, thank you so much for sharing that because it puts so much value and context around how we should operate in marriage. 
Yes. We get married, we say these vows, and these vows are so contrasting. We say for better or for worse. That's a yes. big, that, we don't know what that looks like. Yes. You know what I'm saying? For better, we all, we all said, okay, well, it's good. For worse, what does worse really look like? We never, ever think about the gravity of what that looks like That's at play. Right. You know, uh, for rich or for poor. What does that look like? Could That's you be right. homeless with your mate? What That's if your right. mate went and gambled all the money away? That's right. Could y'all still rock? Would you rock That's with him? Right. He's like, oh, no, nah, I ain't dealing with no gambler. You That's know what I'm right. saying? Like, That's what right. does that look like? That's yeah. right. And But when you say, I expect people to fail me, when I say that right there, it, it, it Lord Jesus. So let's unpack these vows. Let's let, let, yeah. let, let's talk about some stuff. Yeah. Uh, when you hear the marriage vows and you know the vows that y'all stood and said at, at very young and tender ages, <laughs> uh, what vow was your biggest challenge? Can I go back to something you just said one second ago go before ahead. we answer that? Um, I just want to bring a little bit of clarity to uh, I do expect people to fail and have issues because right. it's human nature. Of course. But let me just bring a clarity to that and say in a marriage – um, that doesn't mean that no matter what your spouse puts you through, you that you should them. stay. Yeah. No, 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 no. For yeah. sure. Okay. They can fail by themselves. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're not both okay. going to fail this class. We're not going to both fail this I'm class I'm not getting together. the F because you got to have Exactly. Okay. <laughs> so let's just be very clear. <laughs> if you funny. are in a failing state and you don't want to get better, you're going to fail by yourself. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this then. What, what do you think are some of the reasons why people should get a divorce then? I think there's many reasons. I, I think, first of all, if I'm going to be very honest with you, uh, there are probably some people that shouldn't have got married in the first place. See, that's what we don't want to talk about. I want to talk we don't, about we don't, see, people, people. People say, well, no, after you got married, then now what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. So yeah, you but, stay but God in that didn't situation. join, necessarily join everybody together. You joined yourselves yeah. together and wanted God to be in that. Julia, you started some. You started well, some. Well, and then that's, that's the truth, right? It's yeah. True. So, Big fact. Um, yeah. We, a lot of times, have our own will and our own desire. Yes. And we want something that we never asked God if this was what he wanted. And so we put ourselves in these scenarios and then we ask God to be in the situation. But we oh, never God. asked him to put the situation together. So now when there's problems, it's all, well, God brought us together. Well, well did he really? <laughs> like, did, but did he, really, did he really? Or was that really you? Were you being lonely? Yes. Did you, were your, mo what were your motives when you got with this person? Talk about it. Right? Did you just feel like I've been single so long and I just need to get with somebody? Yes. Did you see red flags that you ignored and you just were just so desperate to be married that you, you did it anyway? Yes. Like there are really a lot of behind the scenes reasonings that we really don't want to admit to. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that when we get in the situation, then we need counseling, then we need prayer, then we need all of this. Mm -hmm. And that's not to say that when two people that maybe God truly did put together, that there wouldn't be problems. I'm right. not saying that. Of course. But let's just be very honest before we get in the situation. Like, let's really talk about the motive, how and why. But I do not believe that every marriage that is together, that really God put together. Mm -hmm. 100%. Agreed. See, so was, yeah, yeah, we so we we rocking, we rocking, we, we rolling, yeah. Yeah, I know. I, I, hey, we on we the out here. We, yeah, we, out <laughs> we in these streets. <laughs> we yeah, out yeah. now. We, we out here. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. So go back. back so what, what 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 vow do you feel like was the biggest challenge for you guys? Y'all been married almost twenty. Well, twenty three years. Twenty two years. Twenty two years. Together, together twenty three. Mm -hmm. so Y'all been married for twenty two years. Mm -hmm. Celebrated the your anniversary this past May. You know, uh, and you could say different, uh, sweetheart. I think the vow for better or for worse really encapsulates everything. Everything. <laughs> it's all inclusive. It just really does um, because true. for better or for worse uh, is such a wide spectrum mm -hmm. um, and depends on the couple. What does better and worse look like for you? Yes. And because um, that can be relative. It's yeah. so relative, mm -hmm. you know, um, in sickness and in health. Well, uh, is sickness to death, right? Mm -hmm. What, what happens if, uh, if a spouse gets uh, an aneurysm, yeah. uh, what if they can't function the way they did when they first get married? What if they need hospice care? Yeah. You know, like we start getting into really nuances where they can't function and they're fully reliant. Is it okay if the spouse leaves or divorce? Like, yeah. do they get on and go to the next one? Do they stay to the end? And yep. so I've seen situations where they couldn't handle it anymore. Yeah. And I've seen situations where they have stayed till the spouse has died and have been faithful to the end and then moved on and then remarried. Yep. But everybody's capacity level is different. And I yes. don't think that they fully understand their own breadth of what they can handle when they commit these vows to one another. Go ahead. Ooh. 
<laughs> okay, I can never say. Okay. <laughs> I will be quiet now. Straight, I apologize. Bro. Yo, when we get on the couch, I shut up. <laughs> You're gonna have to direct something toward me. Oh my god, that girl sits down yeah. and her anointing oh. flares up. Just, just, oh and I just god. be like, what she said. <laughs> what she said. Ditto. What she, she said. said. Ditto. So, 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 Tim, uh, how are you challenging your marriage? You got married at a young age. A lot of times, people are against people getting married at a young age because mm -hmm. the person has to grow up with you not only at, in a marital environment, but just you as a human being. Yeah, for sure. And so with men, you know, they always say that women are already four years ahead of us by maturity level. Uh, Juliet was 100 years. <laughs> <Just one. laughs> this is the oldest soul, the oldest soul I've on planet ever <laughs> met in Guinness my book life. Guinness Book of World Records, oh, but baby. oldest soul. Yes. Uh, my daughter came to me last year and um, she was said, hey, well, the year before that, 2019, the pandemic stopped her wedding the way she wanted to have it. But she said, dad, I want to get married. And uh, her boyfriend proposed to her and she was 24 years old. Now she's 25. And she said, do you feel like I'm too young? I said, I don't know. Mm. I said, I don't know. I said, I can't tell you that. Mm -hmm. I got married at 28 and I got divorced 10 years later. Who, mm. what, what can I tell you about mm. anything? Mm -hmm. And, um, and she, she was just like, well, thank you for your honesty. I said, but there are some processes and procedures you need to go through in order to to know if you're ready for what marriage, uh, the, the gravity of marriage. Yes, sir. To understand when you say these vows, what they really, really mean. Mm -hmm. and, and I encourage y'all to go through uh, premarital counseling because mm -hmm. y'all need to unpack some stuff. Um, but when I think about that, again, I go, I don't know the answer to what happens when you get married young and all that type of stuff. I hear some great testimonies from some people. Some people say we got married too young mm -hmm. and they'll say that when they face hardship in their marriage, mm -hmm. we got married too young, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so I'm asking you, when you got married at the tender age that you were, mm -hmm. uh, what was that experience like as you stepped into marriage and now you start feeling the brunt of what marriage required as a man? It was a wake up call. Um, and it was, it was the wake up call that I needed. I don't think I, I would have woke up single. Mm. Um, you know, one of the things uh, that we talk about in uh, uh, in our marriage counseling, which is different from, you know, so post-wedding counseling, I guess yeah. we would call it, but yeah. marriage counseling is that when you get when you get married, uh, the, the two become one. Yeah. And and so your spouse actually is you outside of you looking back at you, mm. talking to you, about you. Boy, hold on, Jesus. <laughs> Lord Jesus. Say that one more time. For when the you, people in the back. Yeah, when you, when you get married, <laughs> the, you, the, 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 the two become one, right? And yes. so now take one person and that person is now, it's not two people, it's still one person. Yes. But your spouse is you looking back at you, talking to you about you. So Juliet became a full length mirror yes. to me. All day and night, mm. I look at her and I, all I can see is me. Mm. And this is the first time in my life that I actually have to answer the question, what's wrong? Why are you doing that? Why, do you, why are you like this? Because when I was single, if, I, if, that, if that hit my head, man, what's wrong with me? Why do I keep doing this? I'm about to go watch sports. I'm about to go play Madden for 12 hours. Yeah. I'm about to go eat some chips. Yeah. I'm about to go watch ESPN. I could, I could distract myself. Yes. But in a marriage, you can't run from you because you is right here. And so I had to face the sexual abuse that I experienced when I was eight years old uh, by a teenage boy that lived across the street from me. I had to uh, face uh, the pornography, pornography addiction I had at, at, uh, starting at 12. I had to face uh, the promiscuous ways I had, the promiscuous tendencies I had um, uh, in my late teens, early 20s. And all that came with me into marriage. Mm. You, you, you don't drop parts of you off. Yes. Like you, you stay over here and, and don't ruin my marriage. Yes. You know what I mean? If I, if I wanna see you, I'll come back down the block yeah. and holla at you. you. No, yeah. everywhere you go, there you are. There it is. There <laughs> right? It is. right, so Correct. so all of you came with you. And, and all of you is not the problem. The problem is you've never acknowledged all of you. And you never told your spouse 
where all of you were. Talk about it. And how all of you is. Come on, come <laughs> right? on. Right? Because I don't want to hurt. I don't want to disappoint. Yes. I don't want to do this. I don't want to I don't want to break her heart. Well, okay, so then I'm hiding stuff and then she finds out. Guess what? Her heart She's is broken. broken. Her heart is broken. Exactly. So I'm looking like a fool. Yes. And this is a strong woman. With boundaries. Yeah. So she's not going to be no fool. No. Because she done already said, if you want to fail this test, <laughs> you can do it on your own. Okay? So I'm getting tutors. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting, I'm getting tutors and textbooks. And <laughs> I'm, I'm in after school class. I'm in yeah. detention. Yeah. I'm doing everything I can. But I was committed to not just looking in the mirror and going, well, that's just me. Mm-hmm. Which is the biggest Mickey Ficky cop out. That's right? just who I am. That's just who, That's I, just am. who I am. And, and, and I don't understand why you tripping. It could be worse. Yes. 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 At least I ain't out there. At least I ain't. So you trying to you trying to justify, justify your, your, your dysfunction yeah. by saying it at least it's not worse. a bigger dysfunction. <laughs> I could be out there robbing banks. So they should be grateful. So you should be grateful. Yeah, yeah, you should be you grateful. Should be grateful. It's just porn. <laughs> I could be doing lines of coke. <laughs> Sir, you're what destroying, you you're destroying <laughs> you, you and us. You can pick whatever you want. You want to destroy, pick, right. your, pick your poison. Yeah, pick right. your poison. Right. It's all poison. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. It could be Drano. Well, it's rat poison <laughs> and a can of coke. It's still bad. It's cyanide. Right? And cyanide. I, right. So, so I, so, so my, the, the, one of the biggest gifts that God gave me in Juliet was an opportunity to leave my excuses behind. It's one of the most extravagant gifts he ever gave me in you was that, I, that I didn't need to have any more excuses that I could actually grow up and be the man that God called me to be. And, and see, one of the things we, we, we forget about marriage is that we, 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 we ask these couples, even though it's pretty and the event is so beautiful, you're asking people to walk down to an altar. Mm-hmm. And the, the, the biggest misconception is that you've walked down to this altar to live. Right. <laughs> Talk about what happens at the altar, Tim. Talk about it. What mm-hmm. happens at the altar is death. What happens at the altar is sacrifice. The, the encoded into the 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 whole marriage ceremony is is you having the opportunity voluntarily to die. <laughs> <laughs> but because it's encoded and that dress is so white mm-hmm. and then and them breasts is so perked up mm-hmm. and that and that beard is so groomed yeah. and that fade is so dope right and that line is so tight yeah. that we for in the in them cute little kids and brought rings and <laughs> thrown, thrown rose petals we forget like you can make that altar as pretty as you want that's right it's still an altar mm. you mm. came here to die you mm. did not come here to live neither one of you <laughs> mm. and so it is the it is the commitment that I will not make it out of this relationship alive. Oh, God. That the person that said I do won't survive this marriage. I won't be the same person. That's right. Five years from now, 10 years from now, 15 years from now, 20 years from now. Because if so, what you've done is lie about what you came here to do. Mm. Talk about it. You didn't come down here to live your best life. That's right. You came down here to sacrifice your best life, to become something completely other than what you were before you met this person. Mm. And that's been the last 22 years of our marriage. Mm, mm. Hey. So I'm over here shedding tears because I'm telling you the... um, I don't see any tears. No, I'm just kidding. Because <laughs> he wiped them off. He wiped them already. I'm he just was joking. Getting, I'm he totally was wiped. Joking. Wish you wiped them off. Leave me alone, Julia. Uh, no, I'm messing with leave you. Me alone. I'm messing with you. Know, I'm trying to keep my gangster. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over here crying over here talking oh about the God. best decision you ever made. Well, let me tell you something. Because the reality is that is we hear this iron sharpening iron. We hear these beautiful scriptures and stuff yeah. like that, but don't know what that feels like mm. when it's yeah. in, when it's when it's applied. You know, and the first thing that a man will do, and I can speak for myself, would be like, 
those excuses. This is the way I am. Mm-hmm. We we will double down on whatever that is. But hey, this is just me. I mean, if you don't like it, just, just shoot. I mean, you you don't want to marry me. I didn't ask you to marry me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, yeah. yeah. Now you're making me That's reconsider right. the whole That's decision. Right. I had. That's like, right. I married you because I thought that you were evolving, that you were always right. better. But now yeah. you marry somebody, you marry me for the way I am. So, you know, and, and, and we do, we make that decision based upon who they are. But then we can't absolve them from the responsibility of growth. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, if I if I accepted my son and be like, you 16, I expect you to act the same way at 16 as you are at 32. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we, sure. we have a word for that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so the reality is that um, marriage, when I, that's why I say I don't want to get married. I want my purpose partner. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I want somebody that will link up with me. I link up with them and we serve God's purpose together. Yes. And even when I don't even know what all that means, I can't sit here and strategize the next 30, 40, I can't forecast the next 30, 40 years, yeah. but God knows that it's something inside of Juliet that Tim needs. It's something that's inside mm-hmm. Tim that Juliet needs in order for his work to be fulfilled. And, and, and that's what's so beautiful about it. And so when I hear that and I hear a man actually transparent share that um i know how it causes a ripple effect with everybody that hears that you know what i'm saying they'll hear this episode and be like dudes be like yeah that's me you know you can't mm-hmm. keep it yeah i mean it's, it's real keep yeah. it 100 yeah. keep it 100 that's so right. when, you, when you talk about this because i hear a lot of people and you test on this um about pornography mm-hmm. i talked to a couple of my friends and they were like there ain't nothing wrong with watching pornography and it'd be women now like 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 it's a different atmosphere right now it is. in this world yeah. where strip clubs are okay everything is okay it's mm-hmm. just it's okay mm-hmm. it's okay it has no and i and i was talking to this girl the other day and i said you don't realize what the what the effects pornography has on men mm-hmm. and, and uh, she was like i mean it's just I mean, I would love to watch pornography with my with my spouse to get us turned on. I said, the fact that your man got to watch somebody else have sex and have sex with you, you don't see it as a problem. I yeah. mean, you don't see it as a problem. Yeah, like it's not a problem. Yeah. I mean, I just, I mean, I, I watch pornography too. You know, I yeah. watch it and I go. So I want you to share what that looks like in context when you take that young boy into a marriage you heard kurt franklin talk about it yep. on the oprah show years ago but people still didn't get it yep mm-hmm. give people reference so can i pause you i'm sorry i just need to you you you're going so fast i want to make sure that we <laughs> that you're going so fast i want you to hold that thought baby can it. you you mentioned about uh you know you hear the scriptures about iron sharp with iron yes well we have to remember that uh we're not fully made of all iron there's some parts of us that are plastic mm. <laughs> mm. So those areas ain't going to sharpen, mm. right? The strengthened areas of you will sharpen the other strengthened areas of the other person. But not every area of you is the strong part. You got some weak flimsy parts. You got some silicone in there. You got some plastic. Those aren't sharpening. It's good, baby. Right? Mm. So mm. we always want to talk about, we, we married the person because we like, we like their strengths. Yes. Right? We yes. like the iron part. But we don't never want to deal. We just oh that we'll deal with that. We'll we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. When we see the plastic, <laughs> we see that silicone, right? So so, so I just good. wanted to make that That's you know good. you you walk you 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 want so fast. So I just want to make sure that we thank you. We're clear because we have both parts of us. Mm-hmm. Yes, we do, and we can't just acknowledge the good part. Mm-mm. Yes, and not be like, well, we we we'll we'll, we'll get there. We we'll get there. No, no, no. We got to talk about that plastic. Yeah, mm-hmm. we gotta talk about that rubbery part. We gotta talk about that the, that's flimsy, that's weak. Yep. it's not strong. I'm talking about that flimsy, weak plastic. Yes. Mm-hmm. right. It's the complete opposite of the iron. You can't sharpen plastic. It's good. You know, it's good, so sharpen plastic. Yeah, mm-hmm. you can't. That's so, a hashtag for sure. That is, ain't it? Go for it. That's stinky. good. That's, that's stinky, good. girl. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. He's trying to get you sugar right there. That's I'm that's here powerful. for it. Thank Let you, me. baby. Go ahead. Um, so uh, porn is a uh. Porn is the fruit of something. It's not the root of anything. Uh, 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 my my pornography addiction was birthed out of trauma. Um, it could have been a cigarette. It could have been a bottle of liquor. Yeah. It could have been a harder, you know, chemical substance. It just happened to be porn. And so, uh, but porn rewires the brain. Um, and so. Um, when you when you combine um, the use of pornography with masturbation, you are giving yourself a dopamine hit that is literally rewiring parts of your brain. Yes. Um, and as a result of that, 
if you bring that into your marriage um, as an agent of stimulus, you are literally desensitizing yourself from your from your spouse. Yes. And what you're saying is, I I I can actually um, enjoy um, a sexual expression without with our, a, with or, or without, without you. you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're available, cool. If you ain't available. <laughs> Cool, <laughs> you, you know, because yeah. I can go take care of this myself. Yes, mm -hmm. and so what it does is actually robs it robs your partner from intimacy with you. There it is, right? So let me let me put it in a different way. Um, if if let's say going out on a date night uh, to dinner is always a great thing for you and your spouse, right? Mm -hmm. And you decide, um, y you know, your spouse says, "Hey." I still want to go on our date night uh, to dinner. We love going to this restaurant, um, but I'm 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 not gonna be able to do it for like five hours. So you eat four peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, <laughs> and then they're like, "Okay, honey, are you ready to go to dinner?" And like, yes, and like they're they're ready to eat the meal with you and all that kind of stuff. And they, they've ordered because they they've saved their appetite. Talk about right, it. Mm -hmm. and they're like, "Oh my goodness, yeah, I want." To, enchiladas and like what are you gonna get i just probably just had a the the chips and some queso and it's like you're not gonna order no <laughs> how come you're not ordering no food honey well you know i'm just not that really i'm just really not that hungry right now you ate four peanut butter and jelly sandwiches <laughs> because you couldn't wait you couldn't wait to eat with your spouse mm -hmm. and so that appetite decreases and you can take it or leave it Cause you, you feeding off something else. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so one, one of the things that I did not want to happen in my relationship with Juliet was I got tired of satisfying that appetite somewhere else. And here's the truth of the matter. It's an insatiable appetite that never gets satisfied. Right. My, my sexual relationship with Juliet is bomb. Like when I tell you <laughs> five star, <laughs> It's, it's not it is Ritz Carlton. <laughs> no, yeah, we 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 have the most it's phenomenal true. sex life After of all time. Twenty two years of marriage. Let Listen, let, 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 let when I tell you here. it's Liddy Liddy, yeah, it's Liddy Liddy. Yeah. So 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 what 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 I got tired of robbing myself from? Talk about it. Is drinking from my own well, mm -hmm. eating from my own storehouse, uh -huh. right, and mm -hmm. going to have peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. When he had a filet mignon waiting what? for you. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. <laughs> and so, like, our sex life is like, it, especially at this season of our life, it's, it's we put porn to shame. <laughs> <laughs> we do. Don't we? I was... I would say. I mean, I don't watch it. it ain't my business. Yeah, but yeah, yes. yeah. It ain't my business. No, I, we, it ain't my business. Yeah, our sex life puts porn to shame, for yeah, sure. For sure. Yeah. That's what people need to hear. And I always say that married couples always like, we don't have sex no more. We don't have sex no more. That's and it's their like, fault. Yeah. That it's is their they're fault. they're not doing it right. <laughs> That's exactly That's right. It's not doing, unless you have a medical problem. Yeah. Or it's just really uncomfortable. There's really a, a serious condition. Yeah. And you're not doing it right. Yeah. yeah. And, and the reason why you're not doing it right is because you... You have you have ceased to be curious and creative. That's right. When you when you get to that part of yeah. your life, that's yeah. right. When you look at when you look at a chef of a restaurant, yes. And this dude is a cook. Yeah. He, he's done everything with food. What what's his passion to stay in there to keep cooking? Mm -hmm. right. Curiosity and cr creativity. That's right. Let, let me see if I can marry the flavor of this egg yolk. Oh, with maybe some it. cilantro or yeah. if mm -hmm. I add some if I add some cayenne pepper in there, what will it do? So even after 22 years of incredible Cuisines. sex, <laughs> right? Incredible Cuisines. cuisine, Cuisines. right? Right. <laughs> I'm I'm still curious and, and want to know what do you like? What do yeah. you want to do? Is there anything mm -hmm. that you want to yeah. try? Do you want it a different way? And if yeah. it's something that you really like, like if there's a house favorite, yeah. And you're like, listen, <laughs> like, like, listen, every time I come here, I get the sea bass. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I've never looked at anything else on the menu because the sea bass is bomb. Right? Bass. I'm pretty sure your bone in tomahawk steak is amazing. <laughs> but this sea bass has been bomb. That's all I'm getting. So and if and, and if if something's not broke, why try to fix it? Talk about it. Right. right? And so the other thing with pornography is and I, and I try to make this uh, 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 real, real clear. They're paid. Yes. That's right. They're at yeah. work. Yes. They may you, be you, on something. You, yes, you, exactly. know, you know what I'm exactly. saying? 
Um, uh, they, 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 they done popped pills and that yep. erection's going to last yep. in between sets. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So, so this is, this is, this is a, this is a, um, it's a false narrative yes, it is. on true sexual expression. If, if my wife has been dealing with the boys all day, when I walk in the door, she's not dropping to her knees. And ain't going to be no, 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 no music playing in the background. You know what I'm saying? Just, I, I, I tapped her on the booty once and she's like, oh, oh. Right? Like, that's not happening. In a re, that, that's just a real, real person. Real. She's yeah. not a paid actress. Yeah. Yeah. She's right. not getting four stacks <laughs> exactly. for four hours exactly. for me to degrade her. Yes. Right? And use yes. her the way I want to use. Talk about mm -hmm. it. She has to be pleasured. So I'll say this last thing before I move on, because you get me on sex. I'm passionate about this. Um, uh, the, uh, here's a, uh, he's passionate about. Here, 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 right, right, right. Here's the uh, here's the other false narrative about sex. Pornography puts the woman as the lead. Now I hope no women get upset with me with this. But it's the woman bringing something to the man. Mm -hmm. Which is the same thing Eve did to Adam. Oh, Lord. Here we go. Okay. Uh -oh. So we keep asking all these men, do like the porn stars do. I want my wife to do this and I want my wife to do that. You ain't done nothing to her. At all. You can't even find her clitoris. Nope. What is you nope. doing? Yep. Talk but you want it. her to give you bomb head. Yep. You want her to flip around, do splits. Talk about Do it. all this kind of stuff, lick you up and down. Yep. You've done nothing for her. Talk about You it. haven't found what arouses her. Yes. You have not pleased her. You have not satisfied her in any way. And it is the irresponsibility of the man. It is the laziness of that man. Yes. To want to lay back. Yep. And have things performed on him. Yes. Um, uh, that makes him ineligible to experience sex the way God designed it Talk about because you want the woman to be the giver and you be the receiver, oh. which is not even the way we are anatomically wired. That's what I was about to say. We are not yeah. physiologically wired yeah. that way. Yeah. I'm wired to, to give. give. So anything I give my wife and she receives, she gives back to me. Talk about it. Good measure. Press down, down, shaking together, together running, running over, over, right? The run over part sounds like an orgasm. Keep going. <laughs> yes, it, yes, that's what exactly what an orgasm is. It, it is a, a run running over, over right? Run over. So, 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 I feel like if we were to, if men were to, to um, reposition themselves as the givers, talk about it, and let this this body, this part of us, be the receiver. Yes. What we would get back in return. What we would get back. <laughs> <laughs> we would love, but we're too afraid to go there. Yeah. And unfortunately, too many people um, uh, in the church or that believe in Jesus don't have this kind of frank conversation. Not at about all. They're too scared. They're like, yeah. it's too taboo. So, so you have too many sexually up. repressed people in the yeah. church yes. that yeah. wind up sleeping with each other, unfortunately. Yeah. Right. Talk about it. Instead of confronting their own That's right. uh, uh, sexuality and, and how it could be uh, mutually uh, beneficial and pleasurable for both. Whew. I hope people got some context, some revelation, <laughs> and y'all go have some amazing sex, y'all married folks. I yes, you, please do. Because yes. it was made for us. It was. It was. It's not it made was. for Pornhub. No. It's not made for the strip clubs. No. Nope. It's not made for the porn industry. Exactly. He made, God made sex for married people, a man and a woman. So let me be clear on that. Yes. Okay. Yes. He yes. made it for a man and a woman, mutually exclusive. That's right. In his presence, he said, "Do all the things." Talk about it. And so it's it's it belongs to us, and so we should be having the best sex. You should, and there are probably many marriages out there right now who don't have good intimacy mm -mm. Yes. and good sex. They just don't. Um, it's either boring, redundant, mm -hmm. or they need a lot of extra things to support. And it's like, do you really need those things? Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Or are you both lacking in conversation yourself? Right. I'm like, my wife's vibrator. The, yeah, exactly. let's get to the core <laughs> of what what are we lacking? Let's talk about it. Yes. And, and really, when you don't have good intimacy, is because you don't have good communication. Talk That's about good, it. That's girl. really the core of it at the end of the day. Uh, you know, when you're with your partner, that's a benefit of great communication. Yes. You know what I mean? That's yes. an overflow of you all being intimate uh, with your heart, with your words, sharing all day. You know, by the end of the day or whenever you all are, are being intimate, that is an overflow 
of your your you know the the more important parts of your relationship and so um you know you have to know i'm lacking here that means i'm lacking somewhere else mm -hmm. i want to say this uh because we live in this council culture and i want you to address that that you said a statement that would that lends itself to people to be like oh he said let me be clear only between a man and a woman mm -hmm. uh I want you to address the cancel culture mentality that may try to grab that little soundbite. Yeah, absolutely. So the, the cancel culture mentality would say uh, you're being insensitive uh, uh, to those that are in the LGBTQIA right. plus community. And uh, I have three aunts that are lesbians, uh, two that are married to their partners, uh, and uh, one that has been in a long-term relationship with, with her partner. I love them dearly. Yeah. And... Um, uh, by no means is my statement uh, directed towards anyone uh, who is in a same-sex relationship who doesn't follow Jesus. I'm not talking to nobody that don't follow Jesus. I don't got nothing to say about anybody that's not following Jesus. Mm -hmm. No Christian should be talking to anybody that never said they wanted Jesus as Lord yeah. about what they're doing with their sex life, right. they taxes, uh, <laughs> right. they, they bodies, right. nothing. I'm only talking, I'm only, I make that statement. I'm glad you, glad, yeah. glad you asked for the clarification. Mm -hmm. Only people that say that Jesus Christ is Lord and God raised him from the dead. Yes. This message is for you. Talk about it. Marriage is between a man and a woman, according to the Bible. There it is. That you subscribe have subscribed to, believe subscribe in, to, gave believe life in, to. and you can have a same sex attraction. Attraction is not a sin. From Genesis to Revelation, you will never find one verse that has anything to say about attraction. Attraction in and of itself is not a sin. Right. If you look at anything or anybody and you're attracted to it, yeah. God would say, it's beautiful, ain't it? Yep, yep, ain't I good? Yep, yep. Don't yep. I make good stuff? <laughs> look, go ahead and look at it. Ain't it good? <laughs> attraction is not the issue. Yeah. Our reactions to our attractions. That's right. Can our become an issue to the to the attraction. Yeah, attraction is not a problem, yeah. but our reactions to our attractions can become a sin. Yep. Right. So so even when I'm talking to people that ha that that consider themselves bisexual but are believers, yep. or consider themselves uh, um, homosexual but are believers, yeah, the fidelity has to come down to. Uh, are, are, it does your sexuality dictate your fidelity to Jesus, mm. or on. does his identity dictate? how you should live your life as a sexual being. Because if he's the one that gave you the body, then he's the one that governs it. And your desires and your attractions and your impulses cannot become Lord of your life if you said Jesus is. So there's no such thing as a Come gay on. Christian, no such thing as a black Christian, no such thing as a white Christian. Right. Because whatever you put in front of that name Christian, Christian becomes your idol. That's right. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. right? And so and so you somebody that would say uh, you know I'm a black Christian is saying my ethnicity <laughs> actually trumps my identity in Christ. Yeah. Somebody that says I'm a gay Christian is actually saying my sexuality trumps my identity in Christ. <laughs> and and Christ would say that's not what I meant by follow me. <laughs> if you follow me, you have to do as I do. That's right. And and I've given a prescription that's never changed from the beginning yes. of time. Uh, the, the, the first institution God established in all of human history was marriage. Marriage. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's the, it, the Bible is actually bookended by marriage. I love it. Genesis chapter I'll, number I'll two, you to go into marriage, this. Yep. revelation, marriage. marriage, marriage. And the spirit and the bride say, come. <laughs> mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so the, the whole, the, uh, the whole unfolding of human history is depicted in a marriage. Christ loving the body mm -hmm. and God performing the marriage vows. So I feel like if we, if we just stick to that, right? My fidelity to Juliet, um, it isn't because I've never seen another attractive woman. It's that I made a vow to her. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Don't matter how fine the other girl yep. is. Mm -hmm. Don't, yep. Doesn't matter if I'm sexually aroused by her. Yep. That just means I'm working correctly. Yeah. That means yeah. my, my sex drive works. Yep. I need to drive my, sex home to there her because it it's who it belongs to there it is she is the exclusive owner that's of right. it that's what i'm talking about <laughs>
I like how you're talking about the maker of something that uh, governs that thing. Yes. Uh, and it reminds me of my truck. I got this truck, and I be trying to push that thing to about 100 miles per hour. I'm sorry I be driving fast. <laughs> me but too. It, but it has this governor on it That's where it right. won't let it go over mm. a certain speed limit. Mm. And so oftentimes, as humans, we try to push that governor mm. in our own self to try to go get this. And now we've been polyamorous relationships. Yep. We're just pushing, uh-huh. yes. pushing That's it right. instead of saying, you know, God, I'm allow you to govern my body. What would you have? You, you, you're the maker of this. That's right. uh, you put a governor on me. I can't go and start doing orgies and threesomes and all this other That's stuff. Right. Yeah. Even when we try to uh, create our own way of marriage. Right. You know, you get married. Open relationships, open relationships and all this, and all this stuff. stuff. Yeah. It's like you start making stuff up. And, yeah. then I, and then I always ask people, and how's that working out for you? Mm-hmm. Because even that, I find, when I talk to people who, who've had open relationships still end up cheating on each other. Yeah. Like, how do you cheat? <laughs> I was like, help me understand this. How do you cheat on your spouse? You have an open relationship. Well, the rules that we have is uh-uh. that you can't be with another party without letting the other person know. And I said, you still couldn't do it. You still couldn't get that right. Can't. I'm like, you pick the perfect scenario to be faithful, mm, quote unquote, right. and you still can't do it. Yep. So that, 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 it, it don't sense. work. It don't work. Yeah. People, I remember watching this movie called um, um, Cover. And in and, and, and the movie, they were having, uh, no, it was Pandora's Box. And they mm-hmm. had this movie. I watched this in my early 20s. But they had this, um, they started doing, uh, bringing other people into the relationship. And then what happened was the guy ended up liking the girl ended up liking the other girl. And then they went on off and started doing whatever. And it's like, how do y'all, how do you create this great little scenario in order for y'all to have a great marriage? But then the other person still cheated on you with the person y'all brought into the marriage. I'm yep. like, well, this is just, just go back to the, to the, to the maker of it and just do it that way. That's right. And make that work. And yes. I, and I, I, I want to say this as well. You, you know, what I've heard, the narrative I've heard more than anything, especially when it comes to, Uh, Because what somebody's retort would be to what you just said is, well, this is a monogamous, loving, exclusive relationship. And it's about love. Yeah. To which my response is love without boundaries isn't love. Talk about it. That's right. Talk about it. Love that has no boundaries isn't love at all. It's actually lasciviousness. Yes. Right? Yeah. You talk about that governor. There's also a speed limit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The speed limit is a reminder. <laughs> that's that right. If, going too fast. if you go that's past right. this point <laughs> you're get and you need to that's slow right. down or you need to make a sudden stop, you're going to die. Yes. Right. Like you're not going to yeah. hurt yourself. Yeah. You're going to die. Yeah. Right. If you're doing 120 yes. in a 75, <laughs> you're right. going to disintegrate <laughs> upon impact. Right. Like there is yeah. no coming home for you no yeah. and and so god's love has always given boundaries yes mm-hmm. we by nature don't like boundaries at all but when we submit to them what we find out is that boundaries are are for our protection that's right not for our punishment that's yes right. they're keeping us from something and so the more that we've opened up boundary less relationships the more the the, the more unprotected our souls have become mm. And the more hurt and harm we've actually experienced emotionally and sometimes physically. Yeah. And I'll just say this really quickly, you know, uh, and again, we are talking to people who are saying that their Lord and Savior is Jesus Christ. Right. Now, um, there's two things. I, we hear a lot about Christians, right? Um, that, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian. And, and sometimes that's a very vague yeah, statement. Sure is. Mm. You know, uh, there, <laughs> oh there's God. a difference. Um, salvation is, I believe that Jesus came, he died and rose on the cross. I believe that he did that for my sins and I am redeemed that way. That is the basic element of salvation. Yes. I can believe that and know Jesus, you died for me. And if I die today, I can go to heaven. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's basic foundational. There's that. But then there is. Jesus being the Lord of your life that's and right. walking we this about. out and submitting your will to him every day. I love it. Yes. Right. There is, there's two distinct differences. And a lot of people say, oh, okay, just because I, I believe in him, I can still just go ahead and do whatever I want. Talk about it. Right. On this aspect and on this aspect here, he has no rule and reign in their life. And so there's an, <laughs> there has to be an understanding or an acknowledgement to say, yeah, I believe he died for me. 
but he's not the Lord of my life mm. if I'm doing all of these mm -hmm. things. Because Facts. if I yeah. am truly submitting to him, then I have no excuses of why I want to do all this. If I am submitting to this Bible and this book and this word, then there's really no justification that I can't that I have for what my flesh wants to do. Mm. Yeah, we're in a an all this open relationship. Show that to me in this book. Yeah. Right? Find it. Find yeah. it to me in yeah. there where if he is the Lord of your life, show me where your Holy Spirit is not grieved. Do you have him? So this is we have to we have to admit where we're having our way and where we're pasting, gluing and pasting Jesus's name on our <laughs> life, mm. right? So gluing and pasting, yeah. Him. We're, we're, we're gluing I heard and pasting. It. Heard it. I heard that loud. Uh, <laughs> or is he really walking with us? I'm only talking to the saints. Yes. Right. We have to really be honest with ourselves, and I, and that's the problem that I kind of find with some people is we just we have these excuses. Mm -hmm. And we have these, well, my pastor never taught that. Or, well, my, my grandma, I saw my mama do that. Okay, all that is great. Yeah. And everybody has to be accountable for their own self. But if you are going to make this claim that Jesus is truly the Lord of your life, then you need to be submitting all these things unto him. Facts. That, that's, just Dot the, com. that's just the bottom line. Ooh, Lord, well, uh, <laughs> y'all want to say anything else? Lord <laughs> Jesus. I don't know what to do with myself right now. So oh, I'm sorry, emotional. I got about 50 million emotions. I, I don't even know. I don't know where to shout, run around, cry, lay on the floor. I, it's, just, it's, just, it's just too much. Oh my when you hear her talk like that, it turns you on, don't it? It does, bro. I want to leave you, now, I bro. See you over there. I, said, I, I want to go home yeah. now. I, said, oh I done gave Tim this right here, straight foreplay. Man, he looking like he over there rubbing your hair. He over there rubbing the back of your hair and stuff. Yo, bro, oh bro. it's it's the truth, bro. Did you feel the plan in your oh hair? My, I, 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 you know what? <laughs> I don't even know. I was so focused on what over, I was he, saying. He, oh, okay. he was over playing in your hair. <laughs> Listen. You know what? He's so he's always typically very affectionate. Uh, so so he's always touching. Touching. It's one of my love languages. Yeah, yeah. physical touching. touch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you just got numb to it, huh? You just feel it. No, just... no, I enjoy it. But I, maybe if I was engaging in what I was saying, I, I might have just not been paying attention. But Tim over getting turned on. <laughs> I'm turned right now. So oh listen, you you preached a sermon uh, at Transformation Church called. <laughs> What was the title of that, that sermon? Uh, Help, I'm horny. <laughs> when I saw they that, picked the title. They picked the title. They picked the when title. popped up in my doggone uh, YouTube recommendation, I was like, help, I'm horny. I need to click on that. <laughs> yeah, man. Every church probably needed to tune in on that Everybody. One, huh? It's got over 400,000 views. I know. It? It's, yeah. It does. Yeah. Yeah. It does. I saw it the second day. I saw it that Monday when it mm -hmm. released. Um, what kind of feedback have you gotten from that episode? Man, and why do you think it was so relevant to the body of Christ? Yeah, I, you know what? It's been overwhelmingly positive feedback. Yeah. Obviously, you have some people that are not happy about me um, teaching biblical sexuality. Um, um, uh, but but my assignment is not to convince them of anything. Yeah, my my assignment is to teach and preach what's there. And what I what I always try to uh, share with people is you, you're talking to a guy who was sexually abused by a teenage boy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're talking to a guy yes. that had his own brokenness with sexuality. Yeah. And and God's redeemed it for his glory. Talk about it. And so I'm not speaking from theory. Experience. I'm speaking from experience. Yes. That the Holy Spirit has literally transformed my mind and heart. Yeah. And I still have temptations yeah. to watch porn. I still have temptations, uh, 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 promiscuous temptations. Yeah. Those haven't gone anywhere. Of course not. But to Juliet's point, they're under the lordship of Jesus Christ. Either I have a Lord or I don't. Bottom line. <laughs> right? Yeah. And, as, and as Mike always says, Mike Todd, uh, uh, who's the lead pastor of Transformation. He called you his, uh, you're, you're, you're a spiritual... Uh, I'm the apostolic overseer of, 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 his, of, of, his of really of him, Okay. right? So, so, so we, have, we have a great relationship um, and, and he allows me, he gives me permission to hold him accountable to his life yeah. as he leads Transformation Church. Yeah. And so, um, but what, what uh, uh, Mike Todd always says is, we're looking for progression, not perfection. There it is. So we're not looking for no Thanos snap of changed yeah. behavior. We're looking for somebody to make a commitment to change. 
And if you make a commitment to change, the Holy Spirit will come help you. Yes, he will. Because my favorite passage is Romans 8 and 11. The same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead mm -hmm. lives in you. There it is. And if that spirit can get a dead body up, <laughs> porn is light work. If that dead body, if, if God, if the Holy Spirit can get a dead body up, yeah. then your same sex attraction, yeah. light work. It's light work. It might not feel light to you. Yeah. There, there's some heavy lifting you might have to do. There, there's some serious denial that you have to go through. But, 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 but God, but God is not playing games with you, right? We, we live in a fallen and a broken world. Yes. And so on the spectrum, whether it's from something related to our sexuality, something to our mental health, somebody, uh, uh, living in impoverished conditions, yeah. somebody living in, in a dangerous part of the world where their faith could literally get them killed. Yeah. Um, our, our commitment is is in in the face of all opposition not at the exclusion of it god never said that you giving your life to him was gonna it's gonna make you feel better yeah it, it, it was gonna make you holy mm -hmm. it is gonna make you righteous yes but but it did, it, it, there was never a promise that you'd feel better mm. <laughs> right? mm. like that's a pipe dream yes right and that you'll be help, happy about every there, there's plenty of stuff i read in the bible i'm like why you put that there you know i don't want to do that <laughs> And, and I got to do it anyway, because because the boss is he's yeah. uh, he's giving I have a king. Yeah, I, 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 I didn't I don't have a president. Yeah, I didn't elect him because he lines That's up right. with my beliefs. Oh, did you hear what you just I, said? I have a oh, king right there. Right there. and, and, and the king gives commands. That's right. A, a, a president puts out president, laws. I have a king. I have a king. My, my king gives commands and I got to do them. I ain't got to like them. That's right. That's right. what I signed up for. Can't impeach him. Yeah, he can't <laughs> impeach him. Yeah, the no. government is Not sitting on his shoulder. That's right. So, so, so for me, I just feel like it. it I, I would. Oh, this is going. Okay, I'm gonna say this. I know you're probably trying to wrap up. I'm gonna say this. this no, like, I'm I, it's like I'm dropping a grenade. Right, right, right. I just rather people say, you know, what? I don't feel like following Jesus no more. Yeah. I mean, I didn't know he was gonna ask me to do all that. <laughs> if, if I'd have known. You know, the preacher said, if I come, he'll accept me just as I am. And I thought I got to say it as I was. I didn't know he wanted me to change. And so I don't need, you know what? I need to make a, I made an open confession for Jesus. I need to make, I need to retract that. Hear ye, hear ye, everybody. I know I said accept to Jesus. I don't know more. I'm walking away from the faith. And I'm you know it. what? I can respect that person. Me too. Me too. I will, listen. Yeah. And you know why I respect, respect him? Because God respects him. Yep. Yep. He has never taken away our free will. Not at all. Mm -mm. He never said you couldn't. Yep. Mm -hmm. He just said, if you're going to be over here. This is, this is the requirement. This is the requirement. Yeah. Right. And so I respect people that would say, you know what? Uh, yeah, I would give my life to Jesus. But if it means I have to stop having sex the way I want to, <laughs> then I'm not doing it. If it means I can't roll a blunt and, you know, drink <laughs> Hennessy until I pass out and not remember the next day, I, that's not the God I want. I, I don't want to serve that God. I don't like him don't like or his church. I, as a pastor, I'm saying, I, I respect that joker. If I see you out in the streets high as a kite, I will dap you up smelling like all the skunk. I'm going to pray for you, but I'm going to dap you pray, up. Because you can't stop me from praying. Yeah. I don't need your permission to pray. That's right. I don't need your permission. I'm, I'm going to pray for true salvation. To but but, but <laughs> I would respect that person yes. uh, more than them to feel like, you know what, let me just hide what I'm doing. Talk about it. To try to live within this construct. That's not fair to you. No. And 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 it's not fair to God. No. So no. I tell people all the time, you know, this is one of the things that I say, I say, the Holy Spirit is a turnoff. He really is. He will turn you all the way off. He will turn oh. you all the way off. Listen. Oh. I remember one time I was so <laughs> I remember one time I was so tempted. Use them. Yeah, it's true. I, I remember one time I was so tempted to watch porn and I had the mightiest erection, right? I mean, I, I mean, throbbing, like I'm like <laughs> About to get geez, a headache. throbbing, <laughs> sensitive, the whole nine. And in that moment, the, the Holy Spirit li literally said, start praying in the spirit right now. Well, and I that's, thought, that's a quick, that's I a quick thought, erection loss. Yeah. I thought, yeah. what? The, I, I'm, I'm, this is as horny as I can be. And Juliet ain't here. He said, start praying in the spirit right now. When I tell you <laughs> that erection dropped dead. Real quick. That thing went from here. <laughs> and I think I, I had not even got through with a randada. <laughs> that thing dropped said, to the, the flow, bro. 
That thing hit the flow. And I thought to myself, oh, that works. <laughs> Use him. He's there. He's there. <laughs> he will make a way he, of escape. Yes, Every it's time. the truth. It's the truth. He'll give you a ram in the bush. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. He surely will. Use that language or read Chronicles. <laughs> <laughs> All either, you gotta do either is one read will Chronicles. kill him. <laughs> <laughs> After you finish pronouncing Mashulam, <laughs> he's pronouncing Mashulam. And Jokaya, <laughs> you'll be straight. <laughs> See that's what see that's what the church is missing the applicable Jesus. Yes, you know it has to be the applicable Jesus. Yes. Like for that, see I'm I'm just real like this. So yep. conversations like this, I thrive. We could be talking four hours of talking yeah, like for this sure. because I know that this is what's necessary for me to get to the other side. Yes, yes. you know Ooh. we can't come play church. We can't nah, come. And you bro. can't Christianize me. Nah, I'll be nah, like, listen bro. to. I've been married. I've been divorced. Yeah, I talk about my infidelity in my past marriage. Mm -hmm. I've been so transparent about it. I don't sugarcoat anything because. Yep. Sure. At the end of the day, God can't heal what you won't reveal. Yes. So in order for me to get to the 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 the, the Lateris 3.0, I have to be transparent about who I was before. Good job. And and, and knowing and uh, uncovering my idiosyncrasy so for that sure. God can bring reference to that and heal it. And also from this platform, as I've been transparent and sharing my journey, mm -hmm. other men been DMing me saying, Man, you know what? I've been watching your podcast and I went back to my wife. He said, nice. I had a whole mistress on the side and I, I moved in with my wife. I went back to my wife. We working some stuff out. Wow. We trying to keep it lit. We talking good. about some stuff I've never shared with her before. Wow. You know, and I'm sitting there in tears That's reading so these great. messages and I'm calling these brothers back and I'm like, bro, like wow. I'd never thought that me being as transparent as I have been would uncover and release people. Mm -hmm. Yep. I was in this program at my church when I uh, went to this church called Covenant, Covenant in Carrollton. Yep. And, um, we went to this, we were the first men to go on this retreat um, and we called it Camp Freedom. And they were, we had this mantra that was free men, free men. That's and right. so you can't free nobody if you bound That's by right. whatever That's sin right. and stronghold you bound mm -hmm. by. True. And they, they used to say it over and over again. I was like, okay, God. And God told me, he said, listen. So I was in this program called Celebrate Recovery. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, and I was in this program and I was like, you know what, God, I feel like I had, um, I had a sexual addiction. I said, I have a sex problem. And uh, God was like, you don't have a sex problem. Yeah. I said, yes, I do. He said, you have a codependency problem. He said, you 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 look for appraisal. You look for praise mm -hmm. and affirmation. That's what that, that's the problem. Mm -hmm. and, and so anytime a woman gave you that, mm -hmm. then you gave them an exchange for, they gave you appraisal and gave yep. you praise. You gave them sex. Yep. And that was, a, that, that was exchange. That's your love language. Yeah. And so I was like, wow. And so God began to heal that. But one thing that God showed me in that process of Celebrate Recovery, I said, I'll never be sitting in front of people sharing. Because in Celebrate Recovery, you're sharing your mm -hmm. your, your stuff. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I was sure. like, oh, I ain't never going to be sharing this. <laughs> These people are crazy. People going to judge me. These people going to be like, this joker did what he do? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then God said, I'm going to use you. I'm going to use you to do that. I said, oh, that's not going to happen. That's, mm -hmm. that's, that's just not going to happen. And then I looked. Years later, God says, now look. And I just, and I, I, one thing I've learned that no one has a heaven or hell to put me in. That's you right. know what I'm saying? Right. And I'm from That's the street. Right. I'd be like, you can't whoop me. Yep. You know, right. I, so I had that, that, that hood mentality. Like, what you gonna, what you gonna say to what me about do? what, you know, yeah. my sins? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like, mm -hmm. And so when you talk about the people that gave you negative feedback about the help I'm horny, I, in my mind, like, what could they ever, I'm going in my mind, like, what would they, what could they find negative about that? Yeah. I just don't understand it. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. And most of the time, the people that's given the the negative feedback are the people that's bound by the very thing that For they're sure. being negative about. Absolutely. Sure. It's the For craziest sure. thing ever. I'm like, you know, that, that was supposed to free you. Right, yeah. exactly. That was for you. <laughs> that, that was right, for right. That you. Was missed for you. You missed this whole point. You missed the whole point. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, it, it's crazy. So one thing I just want to do, I just want to thank y'all for just being it for keeping it real because i'm telling you i'm when y'all look at the comments that's going to be on this youtube video people are going to get so much healing and revelation yeah. mm -hmm. and 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 being set free and delivered from stuff that they've been dragging along 20 30 40 years yeah. going from one marriage to the next yeah, yeah. uh you're like how why are you married three times? Why, why is this yeah. your fourth marriage? Why, mm -hmm. what, what is that? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I just keep picking these old crazy women. You know what I'm saying? Right, like, right, right. Yeah, yeah. no. <laughs> no, that ain't it. It's something wrong <laughs> with you. Yeah. You is you. You're right. the common yeah. denominator in all these yeah. marriages. So yep. we got to uncover We got to unpack that. you. For and sure. so and that's what we want to do is unpack our own issues and unpack uh, our own hurts, habits, and hangups as yeah. we talk about right. celebrate recovery and, and deal with it. Um, how can people connect with y'all? 
Uh, well, uh, Juliet is uh, in full ghost recon when it comes to <laughs> social media. You don't have, no social, you don't have that? I, listen, uh, I just don't have time for it. You don't, I, have, no, all, you don't have no Instagram. The, all, I definitely don't have Instagram. I don't have a Twitter. The only thing I have is a Facebook, and I hadn't even been on there since the beginning of June. I still got to go in there and say thank you for birthday greetings. Like I, <laughs> I know I'm so delayed. <laughs> But I like I have a really busy life, so I don't have time for an additional, yeah. you know, way. But um, but we are on YouTube. Yeah. Yes, we are, we on, are YouTube. on YouTube. And Embassy they can City. Find us at the church. Embassy yeah. City, em Embassy City yeah. Is, is our YouTube. Uh, Instagram is upset the gram. Upset the gram. Um, yes. And I'll do better. Uh, <laughs> And no, you won't. Unpacked. We have unpacked. And we have unpacked. Unpacked yeah. as well. Unpacked is a show that uh, we do together as well. Good. On that, that's, on, that's on YouTube. Yep, that's on YouTube. But that's also through Embassy City. It is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, so yeah. they'll find it yeah, all there. So I'm going to put the link in the description yep. uh, for the church. You know what? And I'm going to actually, y'all, I don't know how y'all feel about this, but I felt led about this when I woke up. I want y'all to sow a seed into, into Embassy Church. I want y'all to plant a seed. Um, this content that I'm bringing to y'all it's free. I mean, I spend all night working and editing these videos, mm -hmm. uh, having people uh, do the switch and the live camera stuff. All this comes at an expense. But when we have people that's on the podcast that I believe that you're extracting a lot of value from it, just sow a seed, plant a seed, oh. and, and God is going to bless you. So make sure that y'all hop over. I'm going to put a link uh, of the YouTube channel as well as their uh, their website. And so go sow a seed in uh, Embassy Church because you're sowing into amazing ground as y'all can see for y'all thank, thank you so, so much let me tell you yeah, thanks when for I tell having us. because i know and we all know that um and i know y'all said that i talked to past well talked to tim but i say past tim <laughs> i talked to tim about oh when i start talking about church i throw past on it well i talked to tim about uh how the church has been thriving or surviving during this pandemic and he was like all oh, great reports but i know that churches need help yes. and resources during the during the pandemic uh, because unfortunately when we don't show up at the church we feel like our tithes and offerings don't have to show up either mm. and so so that's the truth be like i ain't walking i ain't use they good old air conditioning so I, I, don't to, I don't need to go i didn't suck up they air I today up the air. i ain't gonna use they toilet i ain't, I ain't use they water fountain i ain't gonna oh go so a seed or nothing and then when the pandemic is lifting and then you have no church to go to i've heard so many churches mm. that have been closing down during the pandemic wow and uh that's the last that that would be the biggest uh, highlight for the devil yep. to see churches being closed oh, down. Yes. Um, and, and I'm just going to come against that spirit right now. Amen. Uh, I want you to close us out. Um, I want y'all to tag team, pray this thing. Yep. Uh, Juliet, I want you to pray for single people and pastor and Tim, I want you to pay, pray for, uh, Mary folks. Done deal. And, uh, let's close this out. Okay. Well, Father God, Father God, Father God. No, <laughs> Father God, Father God, I come to Father God today, Father God, Father God. Yes, you know, Father, we thank you so much, uh, first for Lacheris and uh, for this podcast and for yes, every listener uh, watching. We thank you for every one of them, Father. I pray that you um, would touch them, uh, mm -hmm. whether they're single, whether they're married, for those that are struggling. Um, uh, just being an independent person uh, right now. I know it is difficult at times, but Lord, you are their strength. And yes, I just sure. pray that this word, that this podcast would encourage somebody yes, today. Yeah. Mm. I pray that it would comfort somebody today to let them know that uh, although they feel alone physically, that they're not alone and you do have somebody for them, but, mm -hmm. but that whoever that person is, they are worth the wait. Yes. Mm -hmm. They will be worth the weight and so sometimes in the meantime uh it feels mean yes. uh but we thank you father that you are with us in the meantime in the yes, downtime lord. and uh we just pray that you would continue to give them peace and flood them lord with your word continue to encourage them to listen to these uh podcasts and these videos and i pray lord that you would begin to speak to them about maybe them yes. speak to them about their own personal self and prepare them for whatever you have for them next yes, in jesus lord. name Yes, Lord, I thank you so much for every married couple that's watching, whether they are having the best marriage of their lives or whether they're in the worst season yes. in their marriage. Uh, God, I thank you that uh, there is hope for every single marriage and that with you, uh, every single marriage that is represented, that is listening, that is learning, has a 100% chance of success yes. when they have you at the center of it all. Thank you, Lord God, for redemption. Thank you for restoration. Yes. Thank you for repair. <laughs> uh, thank you for uh, seasons of refreshing. 
uh, in each and every marriage. Let they all, let them all grow uh, for your glory in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Listen, man. Again, Thank you so much for having us. Man, listen, oh, this is great. This, this, ooh, I'm going to watch this episode probably about three times myself. This, this, <laughs> this is good. I got to Thank take some you, notes on this. This was powerful. So awesome. y'all give it up for the Rosses. Hey, yes. hey. Thank hey, you. Hey, Cheers hey, and pom-poms. Cheers and pom-poms. Yeah. Pom-poms. There it is. yeah. Right. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Discover. Uncover. Recover love. With the new Dear Future Collection. The journey starts from within. Let your inner thoughts find freedom on the pages of this richly hued Dear Future Blue Sapphire Edition Genuine Leather Journal. It features a cross-stitched spine and luxurious cording to bind your deepest insights. A great accompaniment is the Dear Future Luxury Bamboo Fountain Pen. There's nothing more intentional than the writing process of a fountain pen. This is an elegant writing work of art. Join the thriving community of fountain pen enthusiasts and purchase one today. These exclusive items and more are available at dearfuturewifey.com. Man, when I tell you the Rosses showed up and showed out today, I am so thankful that God has been so intentional with the guests that he's brought for the podcast. I mean, I've said this before, but I don't think a lot of you may truly realize that I don't know which guests I'm going to have from week to week. Sometimes I may know, uh, but more times than not, I have no idea who God is going to bring onto the podcast because this is my personal journey. And so I I allow God to, to minister to me through the guests that he orchestrates to be on the podcast. So none of this is by happenstance. Every guest is intentional. And hopefully one day I'll be able to share with you why I chose each and every one of them. Uh, this, mar- this marriage vow series has been an eye-opening experience. It's been a heart-opening experience and a mind-opening experience for me because I had to open up my heart to receive the failures that I, um, the failures that I had in my previous marriage and opening my mind up to receive the download that the Holy Spirit wanted to place inside of me so that I can learn from my mistakes, overcome it, and produce something a whole lot more healthier in my next marriage. And um, an eye-opening experience because it allowed me to see my own faults, my own failures, and to see marriage on a different level and to understand it from a deeper capacity. Well, this is the last episode of season three. We kicked it off extremely strong with Essence. Uh, the first episode was with Essence, and we brought it all home with the Rosses. Amazing guests, Kaylin and Kyra. Kyra, um, gosh, just the man's... Um, I don't want to go through all the names of everybody because it was so impactful. Everybody was so intentional. The Whitlows, one of the most um, intimate episodes I've done where I've actually had to really intercede on behalf of a couple. And we will be giving y'all an update on that. Um, in the upcoming weeks, but God has just been so intentional. I thank God so much for all that he's doing. I will be taking a two week break. Um, I'll be back the second Wednesday of, um, November. Yeah. I'll come back the second Wednesday. Is that a full two weeks? Hold on. I don't know. Is that two weeks? No, I think I'm coming back the, the, the third third Wednesday or something. I know I need two weeks. Whatever it is, y'all see it in the community tab. But I need to take about two weeks. I'm tired. Here's my favorite part of the podcast where I manifest my future wifey. Um, dear future wifey, let's make our marriage an adventure. We'll discover intricate intimacies of each other that only you and I will know. I'll deep dive into your mind and learn things about you no other man was patient enough to uncover. 
I'll add wrinkles to my brain after enrolling in U University. I won't settle for anything less than summa cum laude. I'll be a scholar of your strength, weaknesses, idiosyncrasies, viewpoints, and consistently cover you in prayer. I'll make passionate love to you with your love language. I'll listen to you and hear words unspoken. I'll recommit to you daily. You'll make the wait worth waiting, the dates worth dating, and my faith worth faithing. Your future hubby. Thank you for listening to the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Remember, be lit, live intentionally and transparently, and don't stop loving. Make sure to subscribe to our Dear Future Wifey YouTube channel. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. We welcome your support. Simply share our podcast with your friends and family.